Sonic Advance is owned by Sega and Sonic Team. Even though this game is rated E for everyone, the commentary in this recording may contain mature phrasings and ideas. So, as always, viewer discretion is advised. Welcome everybody to a new Let's Play. Something that's going to be painfully obvious by, in my opinion, the best 16-bit intro ever. Of course, welcome to Sonic Advance. Hey there, everybody. I'm McGurganator ZX, and this is going to be done a little bit differently than normal. This is going to be, of course, a uh, post commentary. So I've already played the game. Of course, you can select your character of Sonic the Hedgehog. Give it a second. Miles Prower, also known as Tails, Knuckles the Echidna, and Amy Rose. But we're going to be playing as Sonic. And at the top of this recording, I've already played a little bit, so you start out, of course, in the O'Green Hill Zone. This is, of course, the first zone in the game. It's the O'Green Hill Zone. It's what you expect. Now, Sonic Advance is the first 2D Sonic since Sonic CD. And I'm probably going to have some angry internet nerd yelling at me about that, but that, whatever. But Sonic Advance is also the, one of the first Game Boy Advance games I played. I originally played it on my cousin's handheld or more appropriately on his cartridge stop that guy stop and it stuck with me for so long of course a lot of the conventions of the 2d sonic game are still present there's still momentum rolling they're still jumping off of enemies and other obstacles but because this game came out in 2002 after of course the success that sonic adventure 1 and 2 had they had to jazz it up a bit so now Sonic's design has more of a uh, modern vibe to it. All the characters appear close to how they did in the uh, adventure games. But you still have the looping legs, airplane arms directly back that uh, the uh, Genesis games did. It's still 100 rings to a life. And it still feels like an adventure, uh, not an adventure game, a Genesis game. It doesn't look like a Genesis game, it actually looks really, really well, which I think is one of the reasons why they brought this game back on the Nintendo Wii U eShop. But again, this is one of my favorite Sonic games, and it's a very underrated series. Of course, Sonic Advance... I mean, you don't really remember these except as companion games for the Adventure series. Because, uh... Well, why? Because Chow Garden compatibility, which I'll be showing off much later. But yes, all the conventions are there, jumping off springs, grabbing onto handholds, but now with grind rails from uh, Sonic Adventure 2. And I miss that, uh, whatchamacallit, that uh, electric shield, the ring magnet, because it's a timing thing to get extra jump distance, and yeah, if you call me a scrub, I am a scrub, thank you. But yes, there are a lot of other techniques in this game, like the air dash, which I did just earlier. You jump and you hit a direction twice and you do an air dash in a direction. It's quick acceleration. It's just sort of fun to do. And also, I have a Robotnik, a.k.a. Eggman, is sporting his adventure design. Although there is no voice acting in this game, which I think is for the better. But again, it sort of lends itself to the identity that it's not a GBA game, but it's not really an extension of the Sonic franchise. But it is a darn good game, uh, the mechanics are relatively the same, so if you've played the, advan the uh, Genesis games before, you're not going to have any problem adjusting. Of course, the first boss is a variation on the swinging object of doom variation. It is, the, it is a hammer attached to the Egomatic on, you know, sort of a quad. 
And of course you progress through the games. Seven zones, two acts a piece except for the last one. And each zone act builds on itself, you see, because right now we're in hidden base zone, which is sort of the factory level. And because it's sort of the factory level, I mean, it fits in the trope for Sonic games. And it kind of bugged out my uh, capture software because there's a lot in this background going on, which I like. The backgrounds in this game look amazing. It's just that this one has a lot. So be careful when you're recording. Of course, goalposts still exist as goalposts. I'll be going over the special stages uh, in a separate video because Chaos Emeralds are kind of a pain in this game. But uh, aside from all that, this game follows a very formulaic structure that the Genesis games put in place. Uh, a lot of the acts in the zones are relatively the same to what they were in the Genesis. First act is Rolling Green Hill Beach Area. Second zone, or sec first zone, second zone is factory. Third zone, we'll see in a second. But, uh, yes, there's still a- new to this game, of course, is, uh, the sort of inertia concept that Sonic and company have when bouncing off of objects using certain abilities. Like, if you go spin that- if you do your roll, or spin dash, off of an object and bounce off of an item, you- rebound all the way up, which is why I bounce so high. Sonic also has his mid-air shield from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, so if you do that at the right point, you rebound up. Uh, acts compounding on each other doesn't always mean themes. Of course, it's the music. You know, Act 1 is sort of like this introductory thing. Act 2, much more serious and much more involved. I feel like Act 1 is just sort of there to get you through and enjoy it, and Act 2 is... You know, more and more platforming happens, although I'm wrong in a couple of instances. The game does get more platforming heavy as it goes on. It's not just about speed. And if I may say anything to the effects of the uh, sprites, is that Sonic's run animation in this looks janky. You know, I normally don't use that term to describe stuff, but you no, know, it's the windmill feet from a... Uh, the Genesis games with the arms from the adventure games, and it just looks really weird without Sonic leaning into his run for aerodynamics. Other characters have a sort of an issue with their run cycle as well, but I think Sonic has it the worst. Also, I would consider Sonic the hard mode of the game, the, or at least the uh, third hard, the uh, second hardest mode, uh, because Sonic. You have to use a lot of momentum, uh, momentum and rebound tricks to do to get the most out of him. Of course, because all characters feel like they move about the same speed. Maybe Sonic's a little bit faster, but Sonic requires the use of his spin ball roll or and of in his uh, spin jump, his air boost to get a lot of uh, work out of his stages. No, he doesn't have. You know, level traversing gimmicks like Knuckles, Amy, and Tails do. Which means when you play Sonic Story, you're getting the full shebang. You're not getting a gimmick, you're getting just something that you're used to with the Genesis games. Of course, I think the boss fights in these games are on par, if not a little bit better, with the Genesis games because, you know, they feel like they're a little bit more unique. You know, now you have a golden Egomatic on a spring. No, that's just goofy. It's incredible. You know, it's just, what's Eggman gonna do? He's gonna flatten ya. You know, because we're snooping as usual, you see? Of course, if you get hit on the uh, boss's way down, you can get a couple of free hits in on him. Of course, his uh, high jump attack will uh, track your location instead of being sort of a set thing. So, if you get hit by that, hit him a couple of times. Uh, and he'll be fine. Uh, I am playing this on the hard mode. Or on the hardest difficulty. So, on an easier difficulty, it takes about half the hits. And now we're in Casino Paradise Zone. This is miles above anything ever in a 2D Sonic. The theme feels like it's appropriate. You know, not like the Starlight Zone. Not like Casinopolis. But uh, Carnival Night is my favorite casino level out of them all. And it's 
I think it's really fun. I think it's a very good level. It of course has these uh, pinball tracks that you can travel down, which exist sort of in the foreground. Meaning you bypass all the obstacles, but you also miss all of the collectibles. It also has these little spinning things, I don't really know, but you can hit hold either direction, you can go off. It has these flags that when you run into them, they give you a big speed boost, like so. And of course, because this is Casino the level, it has pinball flippers, it has the classic bumpers, it's got that nice 16-bit jazz, or more than 16-bit jazz. No. I have to praise the sound production on this game because everything sounds good. All the sound effects pop. They all feel great. Like the spin, it sounds like you're revving up. Bouncing off stuff, it sounds good. The bumpers. Classic and really good. Collecting a ring sounds good. Getting a hit sounds bad. I mean, props to Wavemaster for their sound design. And the music, of course, is just, it's Sonic. You, you get what you see. It's, it's a Sonic game. You don't get horrendous music all the time, unless it's made by a third party. In that case, don't trust the music. But that's a personal opinion, of course. This is a very standard casino level. It doesn't have an oil drum of death blocking the path. It's just very straightforward. Run right until you can't, and then platform up and run right some more. I mean, heck, even falling down that sort of spinning tumbler sort of thing, it's cool. Popping up a balloon sounds good. Again, the jump sounds good. This game is its a very underrated title, um, probably because Sonic Adventure. And the fact that uh, Sonic Adventure 2 and Battle and uh, DX came out shortly after this, in uh, 2003 with the GameCube. But, uh, it, this is one of the more underrated titles. I think the handheld Sonic games perfectly capture how the franchise was supposed to evolve in a 2D perspective. I think all of the, uh, I, I only think they get better. I think people need to give them more of a look, and now that the uh, Sonic Advance game is on the eShop for the Wii U, I think now that, now, now that that's happened, people can have, you know, an experience that they might not have had as a child. Because it, w it wasn't technically this for me, but for other people, you know, it's probably their first foray into the Sonic franchise, especially because it's 2002, before the GameCube port, right before the GameCube ports happened. And of course I was dumb, I bounced off some thing, I bounced off some bumpers, thought I could duck the uh, spikes, and I couldn't. See again, if you go off of a... Uh, Sort of like a trick obstacle or a level gimmick. You momentum bounce. It's key to speed runs. I'm not very good at it. I just like playing the game and jumping. See, there's the insta shield. I don't think it works the same as it does in Sonic Advan uh, Sonic 3 in Knuckles. Because when you try to shield with it, sometimes it gets sometimes it's overly specific. But it's kind of a fun momentum trick. You also have the uh, somersault slide that Sonic Adventure 2 had. But, uh, yeah. The uh, boss here is a little bit more frustrating because both it and a fake version with spikes come out of a tube and they go both go in two different directions. So you sort of have to predict where they go. Uh, a very good strategy is just to sort of hang on the bottom and when one goes past you, you uh, use your B attack. Because generally they go through the little uh, pipes. Uh, I tried to duck too quickly. It's very. This is a luck-based boss. There is very little skill that actually goes with it outside of uh, the tech of hitting a boss when it's going into the thing with your B attacks. Because they can clip through obstacles for some reason. So a good strategy is just to sort of duck on the bottom and wait till the boss comes by. See, like so. And you can get up to two hits with Sonic. You might be able to get three when he's going vertical. When Eggman's going vertically down. I mean, this fight isn't really exciting. It just sort of is. It's painful to watch because I get hit at some really dumb times because of poor predictions. It's like playing a fighting game. Of course, if you are Sonic, you can use the first part of your somersault attack to sort of roll under the bomb or the fake. 
uh, Eggman. Of course, if you, uh, do two parts of the three-part somersault attack, which all are hitbox damage, and then you hit the jump button immediately after you pop back up in sort of a weird jump, you can't damage anybody. Fourth zone is Ice Mountain. Uh, this is one of my favorite zones, if not because both parts are beautiful. This also destroys your capture card because of the particle effects on the snow. So, it's gonna be laggy. This is part I do apologize for. Uh, the second part of this zone is... I would say a lot of zones have an enjoy a more enjoyable first half than second because some of the boss battles are junk. See, like here. Because of the snow, we're just sort of lagging out. And again, it's particle effects. No, I don't have money for subscriptions to things. I can't, you know, record efficiently. I am scrubbed here. But when there's a lot happening on the screen, yes, capture software will lag. And that's just part of the domain. Of course, animals are still important in this game. When you, uh, bop open an enemy, an animal comes out. But, uh, the plot to this game is rather simple. It's Eggman is up to no good. What do you do? Beat him up. I mean, the instruction manual might have more to say than just that, but, I mean, when it's a Sonic game with a bunch of furry animals and a talking egg-shaped man, the, I, I don't think you have to expect a lot when it comes to this. Of course, if you're in the snow, you'll move slower, you'll, you'll, you'll break faster, it just sort of increases your friction. Which I always thought was pretty cool, having friction in a Sonic game. Other than, uh, 3D Sonic. But, uh, this level's main gimmick is its water puzzles. Of course, if you mess up and you take too long, you get that oh-so-lovely time is up, you are sort of drowning music, and it's kind of horrible. Again, all of the other characters have movement tech. And Sonic doesn't, so... Again, this is a very true to original experience. And I try to do a cool level trick, but it doesn't really work because underwater momentum is weird. But, uh... Generally, you can bounce off of that box using a momentum trick with, uh, Amy. And you can bounce all the way back up. It's actually really funny. Ice Mountain Zone 2 is my favorite because it's... It's stage theme, it may not be as beautiful as Ice Mountain 1, but it it's more sonic. It's just got a better feel. And I think that's what counts. Again, the soundtrack, go give it a listen. It's Just type in Sonic Advanced OST. All of it's good for very different reasons. Like the first act of this zone, atmospheric. Second act has those fish, which come out of those uh, obvious crevices. Crevasses? I don't know. But again, of course, underwater, there are air bubbles. It's, it is never a bad idea to refuel. Of course, when you pick up the speed shoes, sound goes faster, and I was moonwalking at the bottom of the sea. Which, uh... That's a subtle reference to something I did in the past that I can't find anymore. Up oh, and there's the dying music, and there it goes. Again, be careful when you drop on these falling ice blocks, because, uh... Barracuda robots, fish robots, will jump out at you. And that's never a fun time. So, of course, here is the goal, and here's another spring trap. Haha. <laughs> With, uh, two springs facing each other in a pit. That if you miss input, you're not gonna have a fun time. Uh... This part of the level is really neat because it's sort of like a uh, geothermal vent sort of thing, where it'll launch up these items, where it will launch up these pieces of earth or ice. And here's the dying music again because you can never have enough air because oxygen is important. Uh, of course, invincibility doesn't prevent getting smushed or uh, running out of oxygen, so be be careful. Again, to get your most out of this level, especially with Sonic, you need the momentum tricks that I just don't have. I do use a lot of rolling, though, so... It's 
surprise spring surprise spikes are bad. Anyways, make sure to jump off those flows. At this part of the level, you can jump above water to get more air. It's rather useful. If you touch that hot fire sort of graphic, you are going to take damage and the knockback probably will kill you. So, approach with caution, especially with Sonic. Because he can't swim or momentum or do special jumps or anything. Of course, you can spin dash up ramp lips and you can jump off for a... Uh, that sort of special sort of thing. But now we have the hardest boss in the game, in my opinion, as Sonic. Of course, what he'll, what Eggman will do in this mech is uh, these sort of icicles will drop down. And the problem is you're underwater and you can't jump all the way to the surface. And it also causes the screen to lag out like a mother. So, again, apologies. But, uh... Your strategy is to jump off the icicles and bop Eggman. The problem is you also have to manage your air, being sure to jump above water when you're able to. And as Sonic, again, who can't swim, who can't increase his altitude, who even doesn't have a hammer that he can just slap Eggman with, it's hard to get a lot of hits in really quick. Uh, you'll see in the uh, next character that I do that uh, Tails is the optimal character to face this boss with because uh let's face it he can tail attack them sorry about that it's just that uh I had to go out and get some stuff bring it in because storm and yeah the boss is over it, it is a little bit more difficult for first time players of the game uh jumping off the icicles isn't very intuitive you think he's gonna drop down a little bit but he doesn't so that's okay so, boss is cleared, where off to now? We haven't been to Angel Island in a while, so of course, what better way than to uh, go to Angel Island Zone? Which is actually kind of neat. We haven't been here since uh, Sonic 3 and, uh, well no, technically we haven't been here since Sonic Adventure because Angel Island housed a couple of zones. I mean, it was kind of neat. Uh, the main gimmick of this level is, is that it's Angel Island, it's suspended in air, so there's a lot of jump gimmicks, there's a lot of uh, jumps over bottomless pits, a lot of floating uh, just springs and mechanisms and gimmicks that you just gotta use. With the occasional momentum trick here and there, uh, like this segment for instance, you drop down, you go down an incline, it bounces you up, and uh, yeah. So there's a lot of instances where you think you're going to get, frankly, uh, drop down a bottomless pit and you think you're going to have to make a split second jump. This game doesn't really do that to you. Like, heck, even if you get hit by those spike balls, you can still sort of recover. Although, if you fall down on those spikes, I do believe that is game over. There's not an easy ledge by there, which I actually like a lot. It punishes mistakes, but it also teaches you on the first shot. Uh, Angel Island also features these wind gusts, which just sort of draw you up if you're ne if you're near them. Their hitboxes are pretty generous, so you don't have to be exact. Although it puts you in a falling animation, you can't really fly or glide after that if your tails are knuckles. So it's just something to keep in mind. Of course, these uh, spheres rise and fall with how you run, very similar to the uh, lug with the uh, lug nuts and whatnot in uh, Oil Ocean from Sonic 2. Yeah, yeah, this game has a lot of attachment to the Genesis games and how it plays. The momentum feels very similar when it wants to be. Uh, the, everything still feels sort of the same, just with an update for how characters look. And a couple of moves that are situate, more situationally useful than uh, anything else we've seen in a Sonic game thus far. Of course, after a large staircase, you jump up and you gotta go left. So, Angel Island Zone has a bit more platforming than uh, Ice Mountain, of course. Again, these zones get more and more platforming intensive the farther you go on. So, there is no easy way to get out of spin dash animation, so you just sort of gotta deal with it. But, uh... <sighs> whew. 
24 minutes in, of course, they still have these sand traps where you can just jump up the falling sand, which can uncover a couple of goodies, which is always, always, always nice. Uh, this game does feature a points system, although it's not important. I mean, yeah, if you're doing a speed run, you can uh, track how many points you have and uh, compare it to your friends, but uh, points don't really mean anything because there are no continues in this game. There are only li there are only lives that you collect with every hundred rings. So points are for bragging rights. I mean, it's very confusing. To this day, I still never figured out what the point system means. I doubt I ever will. But new to this game, though, from a 2D Sonic, are breakable walls. You use a character's attack, and you'll just bust right through it. You don't need to be a specific character. But, uh, I think, I think that part of the game was a missed opportunity in its, uh, in itself because it could have opened up additional routes for how characters go instead of, you know, the title character getting grind rails and that's it? It's very confusing. But again, this is the first time a game like this has been made. Uh, I think it shows with the Japanese uh, level text that uh, this game wasn't wholly expected to do well enough to warrant additional titles in the, ser in the Sonic Advance series. Which you can see at the top of uh, Act 2, right in the bottom left. It has the uh, Angel Island Zone Act 2 text in, uh, I want to say it's Kana, but I'm probably wrong. But, uh, it's, it's probably the other Japanese style language. But Act 2 of, uh, this zone, again, it's a bit more platforming intensive. It, uh... Gives you a shield at the start, so you know what kind of nonsense you have to expect, of course. Shield doesn't prevent knockback, so if you get knocked back into a pit, you're gone. And if you get crushed by an object, again, that doesn't really save you. It just saves you from one non-lethal hit. Uh, this is the worst part of the level, because missing the timing on that rising block, sort of puzzle jump, it uh, means that you have to reset the thing, and... Even the first time I played this game, uh, that stopped me several, several times, and I got horrendous times on this level. Of course, again, you can jump off of the falling columns of sand. Also, at that spring, you have to hold right, otherwise you're not going to make it, and you're going to fall and die. Which, that's bad level design. The game doesn't tell you you can modify your momentum in midair by holding left and right while after going off of the spring. So, you kind of have to figure that out. Especially a, a spring that's a diagonal, not a, a horizontal spring. Or a vertical spring, I should say. Because if it's a vertical spring, yeah, you can modify your momentum left and right to reach additional platforms. But if it's a diagonal spring, you don't know if you can, you know, modify your momentum midair. Also, the uh, winding sort of S from uh, the Sonic Genesis games, it's, it's back as a way to build up more momentum for these types of segments where you go off of a sort of a lip of a ramp and you uh, get to higher ground, although that's completely automated and it sort of takes execution away from the player. These games are really guilty from Always Run Right, of course. This pillar right here, if you miss this floating pillar, you fall. So that's a empty pit in itself. Uh, I have to talk about the level design, of course. Of course, again, there are a lot of floating sort of block stuff, so... If this game had voice acting, it would tell you, be careful not to fall multiple times. But it doesn't, so it's good. The only uh, get GBA games... To have that are uh, Sonic Battle and Sonic Advance 3, which I'll be getting to at some point. So, this is one of my favorite Sonic games personally because it doesn't take a lot to get involved in. It's not horribly difficult. I mean, it does have a couple of segments where if you bang your head against the wall enough, you're gonna figure out how to play. And you're gonna figure out how to get past. But, that's kinda it. 
I mean, the levels themselves, I mean, yeah, you're going to lose a life or two on your first run. But, they're not impossible. Although this boss coming up is impossible. You know, it's Angel Island Zone, so wait, what's, what, what's Zagos doing here? And why is he pink with, uh, yellow gloves? I mean, uh, Knuckles, has years of, uh, Solitude done this to you? Now, you'll find this strange because on the, uh, character select screen you can pick Knuckles himself. So, you of course, uh, hit him a couple of times and he's a robot. Uh, Robo Knuckles or Mecha Knuckles, I guess, uh, main gimmick is that he shoots missiles at you. That is one of his, that is one of two of his only attacks. Uh, he has, he has another attack, of course. He'll, uh, his spinball jump can hurt you. It has attack properties. Uh, his glide can hurt you because it hits enemies. But, uh, with Robo Knuckles especially, he will, uh, spin dash at you. But if you try to spin dash at him when he's at a neutral position, he'll block it. And you'll just bounce back. So it's a nice shout out to uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. But, uh... But, I mean, uh... We already know that this game's base is supposed to be a, the successor to the Genesis games. Uh, as a first time player, you are going to lose a lot to this guy. So, uh... Be prepared for, uh... Whatever is going to happen to you. Uh, also, as a neat thing, because there are no continues, uh, you, it, it saves after you complete an act. Uh, and I believe the uh, zone, you're able to fully select the zone after you beat both acts. I think you can select an act, though, after you beat it. I'm going to have to go back and check in the game's programming. Or in the uh, menu, I guess, for other characters. But yeah, if you beat an act, you can go back and play it again uh, for, as a level select. Uh, with this boss, I mean, the level's not too hard, so it'll get you back up to speed. And yeah, this is a guy I still die on a lot because his AI is, uh, the AI to this is uh, kind of weird. Uh, until you reveal that, yes, this guy is a robot and you ba break off the pink paint? I don't really know what it is. He won't move on to his next phase. He won't use other attacks. But he will also won't use attacks. Knuckles actually has the punch combos, uh, the aerial attack. He just uses the jump, the spin dash, and the glide. And if you're near him, he'll just glide at you. See, there's the uh, spin dash I was talking about. But he will he will glide up to you and then drop. Which, of course, his body, he has a full body hitbox. He won't be damaged by it. It's kind of janky. But he will uh, shoot missiles out of his mouth. Which is uh, kind of weird, Knuckles. I didn't think that you could uh, shoot. I didn't know you were ingested missiles on a daily basis. But yes, his attack patterns are kind of random. If he's far away from you, he'll shoot a missile. If he's within some distance parameter, he'll glide at you and drop very strange indeed but those are the first five zones of this game uh, coming to you in the next part are the next set of zones so be sure to uh, come back and catch when we go to a uh, I believe it's the egg rocket zone next part in the uh, Sonic Advance playthrough so I'll see you then